All right, here he is, Tommy Henriksen, Alice Cooper, Hollywood Vampires, a bunch of other bands, and now Crossbone Scully. Tommy, what's going on, man? Uh, nothing much. Uh, living in Switzerland right now. How you doing, Logan? I'm doing good, man. Thank you for doing this. I appreciate it. It's the day before Thanksgiving, so I appreciate you making the time. Uh, well, the good thing is in Switzerland, they don't celebrate <laughs> So no holiday <laughs> plans for you, huh? Oh, not at all. Um, but thank you for having me on your show. I appreciate it, man, a lot. So I'm, I'm so it's, I see you got the Motley Crew back there. Nice, dude. Uh, yeah, I'm. A, I'm a. I'm a little fanboy. That's for sure. <laughs> no, nothing wrong with that. So am I, man. You got Ted. I love the Ted. That's good. Yeah, absolutely. It was such a such a great movie. Uh, yeah. So many things I want to get into, but before we dive in, I, I recently had your former bandmate uh, John Levin, who's now in Docking on. And my God, the, the amount of, of sort of overlap between uh, both his career and your career, I mean, it's just uh, in the role that Jeff Pilsen has played with both of you guys. I mean, it's, it's really quite, quite remarkable, the, the similarities. It really is. Plus, uh, both of those guys, I can count how many best friends I have on one hand, and they're like two of them right there, you know, John and Jeff. Um, yeah, it's like I, I saw John – Playing a club, uh, he was really young, and uh, I just saw this kid playing in this band called Devious at the time, and Warlock was looking for a guitar player, and I remember being in a club going, "That's the guy," and I just that was it. There's one phone call I made to the producer. I said, "I got the guy. You don't got to get anyone," and that was John. And then we became friends from there, and that was like 1989, about 89, right there. Yeah. Yeah, and it's it's crazy that uh, he almost I mean quit playing guitar. You know, he did the whole uh, he was doing the whole attorney thing, which he's still doing. And then you know Jeff Pilson calls him up and he's like, "Hey, why don't you come down?" And he you know now he's been in docking for what twenty years or whatever it's been. It's it's crazy. He's one of the best guitar players out there. That guy, he really is. He he is so amazing, John. When he told me he was going to quit and go to law school, I looked and I said, "No way, dude!" I go do both. <laughs> You can become a rock and roll lawyer. He's my lawyer. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is he really your lawyer for real? Huh? Oh, wow. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> so what better way to have a lawyer, you know what I mean? Who's one of your best friends, you know? Yeah, absolutely. hundred so, percent. Yeah. He's helped me out so much, John. You have no idea. Anyway. So, so your new band, Crossbone Scully, just released a track, uh, I think last Friday. Uh, I'm Unbreakable, out now with the new video. And uh, in that video, it, it, I think the lineup that's featured in the video is is going to be uh, the Crossbone Scully touring lineup uh, when you take it out on the road. Is that right? Right now, that is the lineup. But we have another guitar player, this other kid named Noah. It all depends, like everyone's availability. But that's the lineup with Sam, Tuesday, Chris, and uh, Anna. Um, unless they can't make it, like it's Alice Cooper. It's like it's an open door policy. If one of them can't make it, you have someone else fill in. But I would love for it to be that, you know. Sure. So uh, it all depends. No, I, I, you know, like Noah's, he's doing his thing. Sam does. Sam's in like four bands, you know. So it all depends on whose schedule it is. Anna, she'll always be there. Chris, you know, if the vampires ain't working, I know he'll be there. Tuesday, same thing. She'll be there, you know. But uh, that is the lineup for now. Yeah, at the moment. Yeah. Well, and Sam, I think I a long time ago I I uh, interviewed Sam. Was he in? Uh, is he he's in that band uh, Butterside or something? Yes, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. He's a, he's good. Fast, faster Pussycat too, right? At one point. And he's in Dorothy. Yeah. So he's in like three or four bands right now. He's in Crossbone Skelly. So now he's got like four or five, I think, or something like wow, that. Wow, that's crazy. But he's a great guy, you know, and uh, he's a great player, you know. And I want great players, you know. That's the whole thing. We're putting this thing together. I was very, like, selective of who I wanted, you know, because like the the main thing was getting the right female guitar player you know i wanted like someone who could actually play with soul and feeling and finding anna cara was like a needle in a haystack and when i found i was like that's the girl you know because watching alice with nita and when he had ori i was like going he's on to something with this you know because he was in it he was you know it was like one of those things i know michael jackson did it but when alice did it, it was different because it was a different platform and when I saw that, I went, I got to take 
No, I I got I just follow what Coop does. You know what I mean? Sure. What so, better example to follow? And it's great because I've learned so much, Logan, like being on the road with him and just watching the way he does things and the way he handles the stage and stuff like that. It's priceless stuff, man, you know? Well, he's got to be. I mean, he's like the king of finding good guitar players. I, I mean, he's had everybody from, you know, now Nita Strauss is doing her own thing. At one point, I believe uh, – wasn't Jason Hook in the band who, who was in Five Finger Death Punch? Band, yeah. all, I mean, all sorts of people. And it's just, uh, I mean, the, the guy's just uh, got an amazing ear for talent. He really does. And the cool thing about it is I wanted to take uh, the approach like like uh, Alice did and Ozzy did where you find a bunch of like unknown people. You know what I mean? People who you can empower, people who you could mold and are on the same path as you, you know? And like, people you can hang out with that's the whole thing you know the whole key and um i'm really happy with everyone right now that's in the band you know well and the the idea for the band uh, if i have this right was born out of of uh, doing sound checks where you would jam and, and do uh acdc songs and stuff like that sort of like back in the in the rough cut days and club days back back in the 80s and i think it was one of the crew guys that comes up to you and he's like Whoa, dude, like you've really got something here. You need to turn this into something. Is that right? That's exactly what happened. It's that's funny that you said that, but um, because we used to do that stuff back in the club days on the East Coast, and I used to sing like ACDC, Motley Crue, Aerosmith, Judas Priest. And when you sing that stuff, man, you, you know, you're doing it at the time, you don't think about anything like that. But later on, when I'm sound checking and Glenn's like, I was like, let's just play ACDC stuff. Let's do photos about the rock. Let's do Sin City. Let's do Highway to Hell. You know, let's do a whole lot of Rosie, you know. And I'd always do that. And one of the lighting guys was like going, you need to do this. And then that's what happened. That's how it was born. I went home on a break. And I was like, you know, let me just fool around and write some songs. And I, the first song I wrote was The Boom with the Boom. And when I heard it, I went, you know what? Yeah, this is pretty cool. I think I should do this. And that's how I followed it through, you know? Well, and that song, The the uh, the Boom with the Boom, that's the one with Phil Collin from Def Leppard on the track, right? Yeah, Phil is uh, playing the, the guitar solos on that track. That was another one of those things where I called up Phil and I said, hey, Phil, I got a track. Would you be interested in playing on it? And he was, he heard it. He said, I'll have it to you by Thursday. And I was like, Great. Wow. That's yeah. insane. So the you know, there's, there's so much backstory to that. I don't want to take up all the time and, you know, but like how it feel, it's actually pretty cool, but we'll do it another time if you want, you know? Well, yeah, maybe I, I was hoping that when we finish this up, maybe uh, at some point next year when the record comes out, have you back. And uh, there, there's so oh. much stuff. I'm like, fuck, I, I don't think we can, we can cover it all uh, with the time that we have, but we'll, uh, I know. You know We'll keep on trucking, but uh, so the the uh, the name Crossbone Scully is actually comes from a Aunt Molly Jackson song, which I believe this song. Uh, I mean, this is probably like a, an early early nineteen hundred song. I think maybe in the twenties or yes. something. And uh, I think the song is called Crossbone Scully. It's plural. Uh, what was it about that song in particular that that spoke to you so much that you wanted to name the new project after that song? Uh, when I, cause I was Googling stuff like, like, um, just stuff back in the day, like, uh, all kinds of, I'm always like Googling crazy shit. So, uh, I stumbled on that cause I was looking at songs about like hardship and, and, and poverty and stuff. And when I read the lyrics that I went, wow, I relate to that, man. This is like so long. I still relate to it, you know? And I just wrote it down like Crossbones Scully. I was like, that'd be a cool name for maybe a band, you know? And it was one of those things where I had it and I mentioned it to a couple of dudes. You know, I mentioned to Tommy, the guy I was playing with, uh, and Johnny and Alice and a bunch. And, and, and Johnny was like, yeah, that's a cool name, bro. And Tommy liked it. And then, uh, when Mark Wilkinson got his hands on it, when he was coming up with the Scully design and, and the artwork, he suggested, he goes, we should lose the S because it's going to be weird if when you write it out and he's like, and, and, and you know, he's been, he's the guy who did like Iron Maiden, Judas Priest, all of those amazing album covers that you love. That's Mark Wilkinson. And Mark was like, let's lose the S. So it's crossbone Scully. And I was like, you're the boss. No problem. <laughs> well, and he's know? still, he's still doing stuff for uh, at least Maiden. Uh, to, I mean, to this day, I think he did the, 
Sinjitsu uh, album cover and, and all that. He just did Priest, too. He just did the last Priest stuff, Oh, too. did he? Um, right on, yeah. Yeah, well, it was cool because I called him up, and uh, when we had a number one song on the metal charts in the U.K., with I'm Unbreakable. We had number two with the boom with the boom, but number one with Unbreakable, and underneath it was Judas Priest. So when you looked at the artwork, I sent Mark a screenshot, and I went, for the win. I was like, <laughs> Mark Wilkinson, look at you, dude, winning, man. And that was really cool, because even though we were number one for maybe, I don't know, like a day or two, it was still one of the, <laughs> dude, it's a small victory and win for like a band that no one knows anything about. I mean, that to me was like just seeing it above Metallica. I'm like going, you know what, man? That's pretty cool. You know, even if it's on the metal chart, you know, I'll take the win when we have one, you know, because it's like I just feel like all of these misfits of the universe, these kids who are part of this whole thing, they're the ones that have met. They're doing so much work for this thing, you know? It's amazing. Well, and the other, the other fascinating thing is that, uh, I mean, you were able to get the legendary producer Mutt Lang to come out of retirement uh, to to do this and and how did that come about and and wh why did he uh, I mean was he just su such a big fan of it that he wanted to to do it or how did that whole thing happen? Um, that came about like that was one of those things where I was working in L.A. I was finishing up the record and uh, photographer Ross Halfin, famous photographer. Of course, I I always respect his musical and just his his work. He's very picky. You know, he hooked me up with Pete Way who also played bass on a couple songs on the record. And um, Ross was like, oh, this is really good, Tommy. So when I got back to Switzerland, I sent it to Tommy, the guitar player I was working with. And he said he knew Mutt, and he sent it to Mutt. And then Mutt called up, and he said, I think there's something here. And I was like, really? And it was one of those moments where I was just like, I couldn't believe it. You know, it was like... I tell everyone at every podcast I do, I was like, I just started crying because it was like, you know, you're working your whole life. You you want records to sound like Mutt Lang. You try and write songs like Mutt Lang. You try and write songs like ACDC, Def Leppard, all these things that, you know, and then all of a sudden he takes the track and he wants to fool around with it. And then when I got it back, that's when I was like going, that's the sound, yeah. you know? Wow. And um, I'm so grateful that Tommy gave it to Mutt and I'm grateful that Mutt Lang actually was just like took this thing and really under his wing and like he's done the most amazing things to this project you know I can't I can't thank that guy for I, I don't know you know I just can't thank him enough you know it's one of those things I still can't believe it that it actually happened you know like I'm the guy in the parking lot you know hanging out like going to see Aerosmith and all these things and these things like, you know, but no, you know, you know, it's, it's really, it's hard to say because I'm still that guy in the parking lot. You know what I mean? Sure. I'm still that guy trying to sound like Mutt Lang, you know, I'll, I'll you know, it's, it's really cool. That's all I have to say. I'm just so thankful and grateful that that actually happened, you know? Well, and to be able to, to, you know, be able to say, I'm the guy that got Mutt Lang to, to go back to work. I mean, that's, that's got to be a, a crazy feeling, you know? <laughs> I can't take that credit. You know what I mean? I'm not the, you know, it's like, I can't go. I'm the, I would never say that. I think it's funny that you say it, Logan, but for Mutt Lang just to come out and, uh, and work on something, you know, it does speak volumes. And the thing is, he is so, it's amazing what he does to these songs, dude. I can't tell you. Like it's, it's like one of those things. Like, I sit back and go, I call him up. I go, I don't know how you do it. I just don't know. I try and do it. Sometimes I think I got mutt, and then all of a sudden I go, nope. It's it's just one of those things. He's a, he is the greatest producer, in my humble opinion, that's ever lived and ever written songs because he's done so many genres. Like, he's not just a one-trick guy. This guy can do anything with anyone. Sure. Yeah. And the uh, the other thing, too, with the the uh, the song, The Boom with the Boom, or the video, I should say, uh, you know, and if, you've, if you've not seen the video, uh, obviously you're swinging a sword around. And that sword uh, you got from Johnny Depp, but I, there's a, some sort of connection uh, not only to, to Johnny but to Hunter S. Thompson. Is that right? Yeah, that's the Gonzo sword. Yeah. Um, that I, that I wave around that Johnny's same thing. Johnny, it's like 
another guy who's I'm just so grateful for his generosity. You know, anytime I need like, because when I was getting ready to do the video, I was like, going, oh, what would Alice do? I'm like, going, oh, I'm looking around Johnny's house and it's like a museum. You know what I mean? Like, Alice would use that sword <laughs> right there. So like, so I called JD. I go, yo, Jay, I go, can I take the Hunter Thompson sword? He goes, brother, take whatever you want. It's all yours. <laughs> so I take the sword. I take the spirit stick. I start taking all of these things, you know, and, uh, it's kind of cool though, man. Every video I have it in, like he says to me, he's like, use it. So, you know, and the guitar in the video, that's another thing I didn't tell anyone. The guitar in the video that Anna's playing, that's one of Johnny's, uh, it's a 1960, what is that? A 64 Gibson Les Paul Custom, the triple pickup one. That guitar, I don't even, I can't even tell you how much that guitar is worth. You know, wow. like I called him, I was like, can we use that guitar? He's like, brother, anything you want. I could have took like a 59 Les Paul that's worth like a half a million dollars. He'd let me take it. Wow. I How mean, cool is that? The, the guy seems like the, the most laid back guy on, on the face of the earth. Even, you know, uh, last last summer when all that, that stuff was going on, I mean, he was all over the news. But every time you'd see him walking in, in, in uh, into the court and walking out, I mean, even in, he just seems so well composed and is like, uh, you know, and not that, I mean, the outcome of that, he had already won in the court of public opinion, so he had really the whole world on his side. But that's because I, I think that's a, a testimony to how uh, just cool that guy seems to be, you know? You know, he's uh, – that stuff, he's the best guy ever, man. He, I've never heard that guy raise his voice. And plus, he's generous with everyone. He's not – that guy opens up his place – and opens up to everyone. He loves on everyone. He treats you like he's known you. Like if you just met him right now, he'd look you in the eye. You'd, you'd be like, oh, my God, I love this guy. I feel like I've known him for like 30 years. This guy, he's 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 one of a kind. Uh, I got to tell you, dude, he's one of a kind. And to be around him and watch him, the way he handles things, I've learned so much from him with lyrics and just life. You know what I mean? You know, it's... It's priceless stuff, man. I, I believe it. I mean, he he seems uh, and and to you know he seems like when when uh, when you watch the vampires play and stuff like he's so stoked to be there with you know his musical heroes, you know. So it's like you're you're watching a, essentially an A list celebrity live out a, a dream when he's up with Joe Perry and, and Alice Cooper and stuff. It's it, it's like I mean the guy seems to almost prefer doing the vampires as opposed to to acting. He's so into it. He's, he's well, he he started as a guitar player, you know what I mean? That's yeah. the thing. Then he got into acting and he fell into that. And he's always played guitar. So, and he's really good at it too. That's the thing. Like, this guy's a great musician. You know, it's like he could do play piano, he could play drums. He so when we started working on the vampire stuff, you know, I was like, You gotta sing, man. I was like, we did the tour, watch you play guitar. That's cool. I was like, if I'm a Johnny Depp fan. I want to hear you sing. You did Sweeney Todd. Let's fucking do something cool, man. Sure. Let's work on something. And uh, we did, you know, and it was one of those things where the first song he sang was uh, People Who Died, which I was like, all right, that's an easy one. It's like you're rapping. I was like, let's actually do something for real. And then when we did Heroes, that's when all of a sudden I went, yep, dude, the voice, the, the sound, the tone, his vibrato. And then we did uh, Hedy Lamar, which we then did with Jeff Beck, which was amazing. And uh, and it, it's just like he's got so many talents. Dude. The guy's an amazing poet. He could paint. I mean, it's like I sit back and what can't you do? You know, <laughs> Is, one of those dudes. Well, I'm hoping that the vampires will will tour again at some point. I still yeah. have I've never had a chance uh, to see the band. Uh, so I, I, I mean, that's definitely something I'm like fuck, I got to see the vampires, you know? You got to, because it's a fun show. The band's great. You know, Chris Wise playing bass. Buck Johnson plays keyboards. He plays with Aerosmith. The Glenn Sobel is the drummer. And then you got Johnny, uh, Joe Perry, Alice Cooper, and myself. We play all these cool songs. We got our originals. We play songs from Alice. We play songs from Aerosmith. We do Johnny songs, Jeff Beck songs. And uh, it's a great show. And it's like, you know, it's one of those things. It's fun. And JD, man, he's like, he's just a, a dude in the band. You know what I mean? He doesn't want, 
the spotlight on him. He's like, I'm playing guitar. I'm singing. He does his, he does his gig. Joe Perry. You know what I mean? It's like funny when I'm standing next to Joe. It's another one of those moments, Logan, when you're sitting there, you're going, is Joe Perry, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, and what I, you know, what I find so fascinating uh, about your story is that to me, you know, most of your success, I think you even said now, you know, you feel like you're, you're really at an all time high, but uh, you know, at one point in the, uh, in the nineties after uh, POL was, which was on giant records had gotten dropped. Uh, I, I know you were going through some tough times and your car got repoed. You were about to get evicted. Basically every single thing that could possibly go wrong did happen. I, I think it, you even said that at the time you, you were a little suicidal. I mean, nothing was, was going your way. And then Jeff Pilson calls you and he goes, Hey, I'm going out on the road with Doc and for, you know, six, seven months, whatever it is. I need somebody to come watch my house. So why don't you come live here? You can work on music, do whatever the hell you want to do. And, and just, you, you, you have the house. I'll let you know when I'm coming back, which is just, I mean, insane. Just like calling John Levin and saying, Hey man, why don't you come down and play? I think you even credited Jeff with, with, uh, essentially saving your life for a time. He did. He really did. He, uh, taught me so much Pilsen. He's another one of those guys, you know, it's like, uh, He's a special friend of mine. He's like, he's a brother to me. And, and I'm telling you, man, you don't really have a lot of those in life. And when you do, you hold on to him. And, 100%. Uh, I don't speak to Pilsen every day. I could call him up, dude. And if I was ever in dire need, he'd always be there. Just like I'd be there for any one of those guys also. I'm there for anyone anyway, you know. But uh, he really did, man. He He helped me out, man. He did. And that's like, that was sort of the, the turning point, though, for you because – when he gets back, you show him all this music you've been working on. And he goes, oh, my God, this is fucking uh, insane. And you're, you're going to be able to get a, a label deal from this. So you end up getting a record deal with Capital. I think you said uh, basically overnight you're, you're a millionaire, uh, which is just insane. But then things kind of take another turn because <laughs> I see her. <laughs> Um, so Gary Gersh, who signs you is like, Hey, uh, I'm, you know, I, I, I don't know if he was getting fired or whatever, but so basically at that point, your record's dead, which then leads you down the path of producing, uh, and, and songwriting for other artists. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, I started doing that and then I started getting all these, like the first band I got a record deal for, I believe was, uh, this guy named, uh, I think it was Brooks Buford. Uh, he was a, he was in this band called Rehab back in the day, and uh, Rehab like worked, the uh, the bartender uh, th that Rehab. Okay, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah. He had a big hit song on K Rock back in the uh, was it nineties, late nineties, two thousand, something like that. And um, and then I, I, me and him got along great. We worked on stuff, and I got this band Revis, a huge record deal. They were on uh, Columbia or Sony. Uh, they had a song called Caught in the Rain, a bunch of stuff. I developed those guys. Then I got this band Clear Static. Then um, this band called Audio Club, Belay, Brady. Then I sort of had, I got all these bands record deals. Like I got like, it was like, I don't know, like six deals within like a year. And then Jimmy Iovine called me up and uh, he said, I want you to work at my label and have your own label. And that's how I got into that. And that's how I got hooked up with Lady Gaga and all these other cats, you know? Yeah, and I wanted to ask you about the Lady Gaga thing because I, I, I think, was it the first record that you wrote with her on? Uh, I worked with her. It, it, what, we were working on another artist at the time because we were writing songs and uh, it was going to be something for that thing, but it never worked out that way because, you know, just it's just the way the business rolls. You don't know. Sure. It's the universe, man. I don't know what happens. Maybe <laughs> I, I could have played it right. I know if I would have played it right. Yeah, but... You know, I was like, you know, I didn't give a shit, you know. I was like, all right, whatever. Let's move on. Let's get to the next thing, you know. Well, I think, you know, at, at one point you had said that with working with Lady Gaga, uh, you, you said that you felt, you know, you didn't necessarily play your cards right with that. But in, in what way uh, do you feel that you didn't play your, your cards right? Um, It's not really play your cards right. It's just like, you know, if you, if you do the hang and you do all the stuff and you play the – the, the the record company game you know what i mean it's like i've never played the record company game i've sure. never played the suit game i'm not a suit you know and, I, and there was problems with people at the label over there you know what i mean that i that i had because i just felt like 
a lot of people were just like triple dipping, getting paid. You know what I mean? And it's like, are you really doing this because you love music or do you love money? You know what I mean? And uh, and you got it. You know, it's like the corporate ladder. You know, I'm not a corporate guy. So sure. if you put me in a room with corporate dudes that are all like, you know, jockeying for a position. I'm going to lose because it's like I'm not going to play the game. You know what I mean? And that's the whole thing. It wasn't like I, I, I just didn't play the game that, you know, most of these people will play. I just I'm like, I'm not going to do that. You know what I mean? Well, and it's I'm such like, a it's such a shame that so much creativity and and music is is uh, you know taken taken over by by politi- industry politics and 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 business and stuff like that and and so it's just it's a it's ridiculous what a mess the music business really really, really is. And I never been that guy. You know what I mean? I've always been the guy. Someone fucking like one of those guys. Like uh, there's a couple dudes over in the scope of time. Like, going, who is this? this guy's a fucking clown. You know what I mean? <laughs> sure. I'm like, going, I can't, people actually use this guy. And I'm like going, all right. Well, Cause I would say all you need is one hit, one hit. You got a career forever in the music industry. If you sign one thing, or have something to do with it. You could use that. And that's how you like, I always say it's like, they just, uh, what was the line I always say? It was like, uh, they fail upwards. I just love how they just keep on failing <laughs> upwards. Like, wow. Okay. Really? You did that? Okay. Great. What have you done in the last 10 years or anything that's relevant to this day? I don't know, man. I just, I, I, that, that was one of those things that always would piss me off. I'd be like going, that ain't fair. You know, like let somebody out. Like the whole idea to me is to empower the next person, like not go, no, no. And hold on to this as long as you can. See that to me really bothers me. It's like, no, you don't hold on as long as you can. You hold on to it and bring people in with you. So everyone else can enjoy this thing and empower them and make them like part of this journey. You know, it's like, I don't, I never understood that. Like, let's keep the guy down. No. Why would you do that? Don't you want to like help people? That was the whole idea. Like when I was at the label, I was like, oh, I'm here to help people. I ain't here to take all of this stuff and put it for myself and go, no, you know, I wanted to bring people in. And that was the thing. They wouldn't, they wouldn't really let me, you know? But it was, it was uh, really from producing that led you to end up joining uh, Alice Cooper's band, right? I think was, was the uh, first record you worked on. Uh, was it Welcome to My Nightmare 2? Yeah, Welcome to uh, Bob Ezrin, who another legend um, who – who's done so much for me, Bob, you know, I've learned so much from Bob Ezrin too, making records. You know, I mean, I'd look at Bob Ezrin's name on the back of records when I was a kid going, who the fuck's Bob Ezrin? He did the wall. Wow. He did kiss Detroit rock city. He did Lou Reed. I mean, he did Hanoi rocks. Oh man. Look at all the stuff that he's did all the Alice Cooper stuff. And to get to work with Bob too, Logan was like, that's like Bob too. He's a legend. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I can't say, like, I mean, dude, I mean, he's the one who said, he's the one who brought me in. You know, I got a lot of stuff with Bob, you know? And then, so, and then from that, Alice asked you, hey, can you, can you join, uh, can you join my band as a guitar player? Yeah. And I wasn't even a guitar player. I was just, I'm actually a bass player. So I said to him, I was like, I'll learn. So I learned how to play guitar, actually playing in Alice Cooper, you know? And uh, thank God for, you know, Link Ray, Angus Young, Ace Freely, Jimmy Page, Jeff Beck, even though I can't play like any of those guys, I try, you know what I mean? I can play like four licks, but, you know, I can get the job done, which is good, you know? Well, yeah, it's almost like, uh, you know, the, the stories of every kid in their bedroom trying to be Angus Young or whatever, and then you're doing that later in life, trying, you know, to, to figure out uh, – Playing for Alice, which is just I'm insane. Do it, dude. I'm almost sixty, and I'm still trying to figure it out, man. You know, I sit back sometimes. Every day, I pick up this guitar, dude. Every day, I'm playing. I'm trying to write songs. I'm trying to play better solos. I'm going on YouTube, watching fucking some sixteen-year-old kid like wail. I'm like, oh, look at that, that little bastard. I'm like, good for him, man. <laughs> trying to learn stuff from everyone. You know, it's fun to do that stuff. Because back in the day, we didn't have YouTube. You know, sure. So then, going from that uh, into the, the, how does the the vampires come about? Does Alice just come to you and is like, hey, yeah, I'm doing this, you know, my old drinking club, and I'm doing this thing with Joe Perry and Johnny Depp. We want you to be a part of it, or how does that whole thing come together? 
Uh, man, it's a bunch of different stories. Uh, my story, my from what I remember, we were it happened when we played the Hundred Club in London when uh, Johnny Depp came up and jammed with us, and we were playing uh like Stones and stuff like that. And uh, after the gig, Alice was like, "Going, we should do something with him." And I was like, "Really? I that'd be amazing." So when we got off tour, um, Alice was in the movie Dark Shadows. That's why Johnny came down. So uh, when Johnny was doing the Dark Shadows movie for me in L.A., we played the show, Alice Cooper. And Johnny got up and a couple other people got up. And um, so we were there. And uh, and then I started working with Jay, with Johnny on some songs because Alice was like going, we should do some cover songs. You know, what would you do? And I was like, tell me what you want to learn, Coop. Coop said, learn some Doors songs. So the first songs I put together for the vampires was, I think, like five to one, break on through. And uh, and then we just started working from there. And then it turned into it was going to be this tribute record. And then it turned into the Hollywood vampires. It, wow. it was weird the way it just it. You know, it just transitioned into this thing. Well, all of a sudden we're in the studio and then Bob's like, on, well, why don't we get all these different guitar players? Like, let's make a list. So we all would make a list and we put it in it was me, Alice and Joe and uh, me, Alice and Johnny would make this list. And then we'd send it to Bob. And we all had Joe Perry on our list because we'd see who whose names was on each other's list in case we forgot one. You know what I mean? Sure. Joe Perry, Robin Riga, Phil Walsh, Jimmy Page, Jeff Beck. We have all, this long list of Angus Young, all these things. And then we had a guest list of singers. And then we'd have drummers and bass players where we'd go through the list. And then Bob would pick them. And then Bob would go, let's get this guy to do this and blah, blah, blah. So that's how that actually happened. And then it was like, let's uh, do a tour. And then all of a sudden, that was before we, did, we did the Grammys. That was the, one of the first gigs. That's I right. I remember was, that. Yeah. We were doing a tribute for Lemmy or something like that. And Johnny wanted to do a song that no one never heard before. He's like, if we do the, it's what I love about that. He goes, we do the Grammys. We're going to play one of my songs. So we played a song that he wrote called uh, uh, about as, uh, uh, Why can't I think of that right now? Um, Bad As I Am. So here we go. We go play the Grammys. No one's heard of this song. We played uh, a tribute to Lemmy where we did uh, Ace of Space. And then we go into Bad As I Am. No one's ever heard the song before. I was like, oh, that's pretty ballsy, man. Absolutely. I love that's so fucking punk rock of them. I was like, I was sitting there going, oh my God, I can't be we're playing the song. No one even heard it. And we're playing the Grammys. I gave up on that dream like years ago. Yeah, that's just incredible. My God. Yeah. Wow. Anyway. Well, what I find so fascinating is that while you've had your fair share of highs, you certainly had your fair share of lows, uh, you know, whether it's, you know, in your career and then in, in your own life. I know your mother raised you, your father wasn't really around. But through all of that, which is just so so crazy and, and commendable is that you've never had any uh, really uh, addiction problems as so many people in, in music do. I think you've said uh, one you've only been drunk one time in your life, and it was way way back in the day, uh, which is yeah. just uh, incredible because you know uh, this this industry just sucks people up. You know, eats people alive. Never got into drugs. Never never got into drugs, dude. Um, and even like drinking right now, I have like a glass of wine. Two, three is my limit. I see. I always know my limit because I'm like, why do I want to get drunk? Why do I want to be that sloppy drunk? Hey, man. It's like, <laughs> it's sure. Like, one or two, I'm good, man. You know, and because uh, I seen that, I grew up around that. I grew up around drugs. I grew up around violence. I grew up around uh, corrupt people. You know, what I mean, just like people like doing bad shit. You know, and I was always like, I don't want to be that. So I always tried to, you know, get away from that. Even when I decided to have a. a a, a, a kid, you know, I was like going, if I'm going to have a baby one of these days, a kid, I want to be the best dad ever. I don't want to, I want to do the opposite. You know, I want to be a loving dad. I want to be there for him. I want to talk to him. I want him to know that he could talk to me about anything. And I just want to try and be the best, you know, parent, husband, human being I can, you know. Well, and I think, you know, that brings up another great point in that, you know, I think I touched on this earlier, but I would say that uh, you know, the biggest and, and most successful part of your career and, and probably life has been in this, you know, second half. 
And, you know, there's so many people that are like, fuck, man, if I don't make it by, you know, whatever, it's just not going to happen. And it's like, that is so not fucking true. And, and like, uh, like I said earlier, you said that now this is, you know, like a high point in your life. And, and I mean, you're what, 59 years old. Uh, and it's like, you know, just because you're, uh, you know, whatever, 25, 26 years old, even 30 and, and older, it's like, dude, I mean, that's just, this is not how it works. Everybody has a different story. You know, most people do not have the overnight success. Like, uh, you know, like so many of our heroes seem to have had or, or whatever, but it just, it, it just doesn't work like that for everybody. And, you know, even some of the, you know, some classic bands, I mean, they had to fucking tough it out in the clubs for years and years and years before they, they really went anywhere. I mean, look at Twisted Sister, for example. I mean, that band was at it for a very long time before they, they took off when, when uh, Stay Hungry came out, which is like 1984 or something. Exactly. I, I was there when I was watching Twisted Sister in the club, Zebra, you know what I mean? All of those bands back in the day. And, uh, you know, it's like it always it, you never can put a time limit on it. It happens when it happens. And the good thing about with me I've always been consistently working and that's the cool thing. It's like, it's up. <laughs> Look, it's up. <laughs> it's down. It's, it's like this. You know, I always tell everyone, if you want to get into the music industry, man, I'm telling you right now, it's a curse because, you know, if you're doing it's just, you're going to give it a couple of years. I wouldn't even bother doing it. You know, I, I wouldn't do it. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah, there's bands out there to get lucky. You know what I mean? Well, all of a sudden, like Greta Van Fleet, you know what I mean? You, you look at something like that, you go, you know, perfect timing. You know what I mean? Sure. It, it, it sound, it's cool. You know, I get it. I'm like, oh, eh, these guys didn't really have to, you know, rough it out that long, long at all. You know what I mean? And I sure. back. I think that's cool that they didn't have to. You know, I look at a band like Hailstorm. They've been working their balls off for years. Absolutely. You know, that's not an overnight thing. They've been working like forever. I, I see that other band, Dirty Honey. I mean, those guys are working their balls off too, man. You know, and they're a great, there's great a lot band. Of bands. Yeah. So there's a lot of new bands that I really like out there that are working. Like I like that Southern River Band, whatever it's called, South River. When I, uh, I like that. There's a bunch of stuff that I really like. That's that I go, wow, man, this is cool stuff. You know, like for rock and roll. Well, a couple of the things I, I want to uh, touch on before we wrap this up. I believe all of the proceeds from uh, these, uh, there's three Crossbone Scully singles right now. All of the proceeds from these singles are being donated uh, to Music Cares, I believe. Yeah. The, the the whole point of that, Logan, was it's like, I, I, I like I was saying, I don't, I don't do this stuff for the money, man. I would do this to give it back. You know what I mean? So I'm like sitting there going, let's donate this to music cares because music cares does so much for musicians you know and uh that was one of the the the, the greatest things about with better noise they were totally into doing that and i love the fact that we have have the opportunity to do that because it's like you know evil world machine the boom went the boom i'm unbreakable you know i mean ugh. You look at the, I mean, we did the movie, we did two videos. Yeah, I watched and, that, uh, I watched the animated video, uh, what was the song, Evil World Machine? Uh, yeah, and uh -huh. it's like, holy shit, like the animation in that was so incredible. And the guy that did that, you found him on, on YouTube, right? Yeah, he's a little kid, man. He's, still, he's like 20, I don't even know, maybe he's like 22 now. I don't even know. <laughs> he's a young kid, man. He's such a great kid, too. And uh, and I loved his, he's very old school, so it kind of looked like that movie Heavy Metal, you know what okay, I mean? Yeah. I really loved it. And I was like, going, how could this young kid be doing this stuff? Which was cool. And it took a long time to do. And uh I was really happy. I'm really happy. I've really loved the way we're doing everything. Cause like Scott, you know, my manager, he always says to me, he's like, listen, we're building a wall here and it's brick by brick. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And, yeah, of course, we'd love to have a big hit out of the gate, but all that but it's just like, you know what? This is a slow and steady build. Like every time it just keeps on getting better and better. And I'm okay with that. Even if I'm going to be 60 years old and the record comes out. <laughs> Come on. Think about it. Alan Kovac. Tell me a guy like that who's got the balls to sign a guy like me this old and put a record out. It's insane. Uh, Alan Kovac is such a fucking legend, man. That guy is. I mean, come on, man. I got nothing but respect for that, too. It's like I sit back and go, you know what? Because most people would not sign, even if it, how good it is or whatever. They're like, ah, that guy's too old. Sure. 
That's why I hope this thing keeps on going the way it's going, because it's a great story, man. It's inspiring for people to know that don't give up on your dreams, man. This shit can happen. If you work hard and keep on doing your thing and you're a good fucking person, you come up with good shit, you know, it can happen. Doesn't matter how old you are, you know, I'm proof that it can happen. I'm the guy in the parking lot, dude, who's still out here slugging it out, you know, still making music that I love. And actually, it's happening, you know what I mean? Where this thing, you know, I mean, like having all of these people around, you know, it's like it's from working and just doing, you know, the right thing. That's what I keep on saying. It's about doing the right thing, man, you know. Is there a uh, timeline for the full record to release? And I know, uh, well, go ahead, go ahead. We'll be out next year. Uh, I just don't know when. It'll probably, it'll probably, I'm hoping it'll be out like, because uh, I know they want to do another three singles before we release the record. Because we have five videos in the can ready right now. Oh, so, wow. and I think, yeah. So I did all, like every time we had a break, I was like, let's go shoot three videos. Let's go shoot another three videos. So, and we're just editing up the videos right now. Um, so it's a lot of, I mean, I'm thinking always ahead of time. So, and we'll probably go back out to LA at some point, like in the new year and make a couple other new videos. Cause I want videos for every song, even though the videos, I want to see people to see what the band looks like, you know? So when they go see it live, they'll be like, Oh yeah. Like performance videos. I, I mean, to do like a proper storyline, you need like big money to do that. We ain't got any, we're doing this stuff on like little budgets, you know, and we're doing the best we can with the stuff and the, the sent the guy's been directing the videos. He's doing an amazing job. You know what I mean? Like he's another guy. He's part of the team. You know, he goes out there. He's like, you know, doing what we're doing, like trying to put everything together with like whatever we can, you know? Well, and the nice thing with, with a video for every song is, you know, extreme, uh, who the third new record is just phenomenal. And they're kind of going that yeah. route. They're going to have a, you know, a video for every song. And, it, it keeps the record alive longer and, and keeps keeps people more uh, intrigued because, you know, especially with, you know, five or six singles going to be out before the, the Scully record actually comes out, you know, people move on from things quickly. But when there's, you know, just a constant, oh, here's a new video, here's a new video, here's a new video, you know, it, it keeps it fresh in people's minds. And, and you know what I mean? It just, it, the, the lifespan is, is longer, which in, in turn, uh, you know, the, the touring cycle on a record can be a little bit longer. And plus I want people to see the band. I want people to meet the band, see the band. So when they see Crossbone Scully, they go, Oh, Anna Cara, Sam Ban Colton, Chris Wise, Tuesday, you know, and Absolutely. the singer guy. You know, <laughs> the other guy. You know, and that's why I like that. I like to keep people engaged, you know, whether people like the videos or not. You know what I mean? When I'm making it, I'm like, oh, I like it. You know, so it's cool. Are there any uh, live shows for Scully uh, going into 2024 uh, yet? Year. So it's all around like Alice's schedule too. You know, that's the cool thing about Coop. Like Coop says, hey man, you get something going, you know, like anyone else, like with Nita, she, she, she misses gigs. She goes, does stuff with Demi Lovato, her own thing. And there's an open door. So when she comes back from that, you know, either we get someone to fill in for, or, or, or me and Roxy do it. In my case, we'd have to get someone to fill in, come back, but, uh, you know, like I, there's nothing planned yet, but that's what we're working towards is to actually set up a tour and do it right and uh, and have a great time, man, doing it. I can't wait to fucking get out on stage without a guitar and just a microphone. Well, yeah, but it'd probably be an interesting feeling. Oh, it's so a great to, feeling for yeah. me, dude. I love it. I get out there, man, and Logan, I'm just like, cut me loose, dude. <laughs> I'm like a kid, I'm like 16 years old. Cut me loose, man. You know? Outside of uh, Crossbone Scully, anything else coming up going into the new year that uh, you can talk about right now? Uh, we're, we're working on this Hollywood vampire uh, movie, which is really, it's coming out amazing. I've been working on that, and uh, I'm working on Mark Storacci's, uh new solo record. We're finishing that up probably uh, by the new year, because right now we just finished up uh, all the song choice, and that, then we just got to just tweak it. Um, but that's coming out amazing, dude. And Mark Storacci, he was in the band Crocus. He still is in Crocus. Oh, but yeah. But this is the show. And uh, it sounds amazing, dude. It's going to be great. And the, the Vampires movie, is that uh, like documentary or is it yeah, uh, like... like a documentary style live thing where um, 
It's uh it's the show we did at the Box Center in Boston, which the footage on that looks so beautiful and it sounds so good. And then uh, interviews and stuff like that. And they're putting it together right now. That's as we speak. You know what I mean? I don't know. It, like, it's not really a secret, but, you know, that's what we've been doing. So it all depends on what the deal is with that. But I've been working on uh, the music side on that thing, too. So I'm sure there's some discussion in the, in the film, too, about uh, like the 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 drinking club back in the days uh back oh, yeah. in the old days the whole story about yeah. Alice and everyone like that yeah which I know they're working on uh well Tommy where can uh people connect with you online uh you can go on usually I'm just pretty much on Instagram disvicious one you know what I mean uh d i s v i c i o u s or crossbonescully.com you can find me there and uh other than that I'm, I'm reachable you know what I mean I talk to all these kids all the time online we do a lot of live stuff i communicate with everyone pretty uh you know a lot you know because i always want to make sure i'm reachable to any kid who needs any if they have a problem with anything like that i'm always there to help them out lend an ear you know what i mean an opinion if they need help or anything like that well that's so great because so so many people are so uh it's unapproachable and, and unreachable and and uh so that's great to hear yeah not me i'm 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 there man I, it's like if anyone's in need, I'm there for them. You know, I try and do the best I can. And because uh, they're there for me. These kids are there for me. They're there for the band. They we have this thing. It's on Discord where it's the misfits of the universe. And that's what we call them because we're all misfits. We're all broken in some way, Logan. You know, and in Scully's world, everybody's welcome. Well, make sure you check out the new Crossbone Scully single. I'm unbreakable. Tommy, thank you so much for your time and coming on. I really appreciate it. Thank you, brother. I'll talk to you soon. Yep. I'll see you next year.